Hey, welcome back, watch fans. We're going to be talking about a very interesting topic. Can buying a Rolex make you rich? That's right. This is very controversial. I'm going to give you the inside truth that they don't want you to know about. That's right. You know, the wealthy, uh, the Dave Ramseys of the world, the government, you know, they all want to... They want to keep you down. That's right. They want to keep you dependent. They want to keep you down. Uh, they don't want you buying Rolex. They don't want you to know the secret. I'm going to tell you the secret, my friends. The secret is when you buy a Rolex, and I'm not talking about this watch, <clears throat> but when you buy a Rolex, uh, you will put yourself on the path to becoming rich. Okay? I don't know whether that means being a millionaire, a uh, hundred centimillionaire, billionaire, whatever that means to you, but uh, wearing a Rolex will put you on the path to success, okay? So uh, let me give you some deep inside information nobody else is going to tell you about. Um, and uh, here's, here's how it works. By the way, I'm talking about for all you brokies, you poor people, this, is, this video is for you. That's right. You know, when, once upon a time, I was like you. I was, I was broke. Uh, and... Um, now, did buying a Rolex make me rich? Um, no, but uh, <laughs> actually, I think it did accelerate things because I got one after after I was kind of uh, you know on my way. But uh, you know, if I, you know, the truth is, if I was broke, it would have it would have helped. Now, here's the thing: I don't care how how broke you are. Now, this is this really video is made for people like in the U.S. I don't know your economic situation. If you, you know, I don't know you're Bangladesh or something. I don't know, but in the U.S., look, if you're making thirty grand a year, uh, fifty grand a year, uh, you should be buying a Rolex. In fact, in fact, you can't afford not to own a Rolex. Now, it's interesting. This is where my boat was right. Uh, I think my slip was right, right. Uh, right where that sailboat is somewhere somewhere that way and the boat at the end was my neighbor who was at the at the end time that's right here's a huge boat uh never took it out and this guy uh i think he was must have been doing quite well because that boat probably cost him at that time 2500 a month just for the dock uh and uh you know obviously you got some maintenance forget about taking it out that's very expensive <laughs> Anyway, but let me get into the, the topic of today's discussion. Why buying a Rolex will make you rich. Here's what you need to understand. You know, money, everything in the world is all about energy. It's all about energy, right? Um, if you have any type of, you know, sensitivity, uh, you'll understand how these things work. You know, if you're in a good environment, it motivates you to, uh, you know, to make money, right? Have you noticed, like, if you're in a certain environment... All of a sudden, it gives you that feeling, or you're around certain people, you know, they're just, you know, inspiring in, in a certain way. Now, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, like some sort of, uh, you know, uh, gurus about, um, you know, uh, the self help motivation, you know, bullshit that you see on, on YouTube. Yeah, you know, I'm talking about just some certain people. If you're around certain successful people, you know, certain very successful people, they just give off a positive energy. And if you're around them, you become rich. Uh, if you're around, if you live in a certain area, in a high energy area, same thing. Now, it's interesting. I actually, um, I'm here in Marina Del Rey, California. And when I moved out here, I rented an apartment out here. And, you know, that really turbocharged things. Because, you know, I was in this really nice environment looking right over these boats in a, a building. <clears throat> A couple, a couple of, you know, slips over, uh, and uh, it really, you know, put my mind in a, in a very positive place. Now, Rolex is the same way, right? When you look at this brand, right? You look at the Rolex Crown. Now, I yes, listen. This watch may not be for you. This is the Yacht Master. This might be too uh, sophisticated for most of you mooch bums. But, um, let me tell you something. When you when you put on the Rolex, right? Everybody. It's been in, they've been indoctrinated. Every every person on the planet, every human being on the planet has been indoctrinated that Rolex is synonymous with success. So when you put that on your wrist, you feel you feel success, right? Now, here's the thing. Let's say you're you're broke, right? 
Uh, and why should you buy a Rolex? Uh, I'm, by the way, when I say broke, what kind of Rolex should you buy? You should not buy this watch. This, you should not be buying a Yacht Master. You should not be buying a new Rolex because, <clears throat> you know, a new Rolex is going to be, you know, generally if you want a good, a good one, you're talking about, I don't know, if you, even if you want like a crappy Submariner or a Datejust, you know, you're going to be, if you can get a retail, you know, nine grand plus, plus after tax, whatever, maybe more. Uh, and um, the problem with that is if you're, if you're a brokester, if you're a brokester and you're wearing a watch like this, you know, people will know that you're basically, you know, you're, you're a, uh, what do they call it, a $30,000 millionaire. You know, you're basically a guy who's broke. Just trying to uh, impress people, but now let me give you a hack. Here is the hack, and this is the smart thing to do. What you need to do is you need to buy a used Rolex. I'm talking about like a day, uh, uh, you know, a day just maybe a Turnograph, uh, maybe a Submariner. Ideally, you want something again, I'm a little bit biased, but you know, you want something that's uh, got a little bit of gold in it, like a two tone. You could probably, if you really scrounge around, you could probably get something like that for three grand on the low end, thirty-five hundred, four grand, definitely under five grand. Uh, maybe you won't have it on the bracelet; it'll probably be on a strap, which which is good also because you know you can you can change straps. There's a lot of you know creative things you can do. You can wear it on a crocodile strap, uh, a leather strap rubber whatever you want right now here's the beautiful thing right let's say you buy this watch for three grand right now, if you buy this watch basically everybody's gonna know that you're a you're a wannabe everybody's gonna now especially if you're a brokester right let's say you're living <coughs> around you know broke people you're living in a you know you're basically you know you're 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 in a uh, you know humble humble environment right you know, those people, some of them might resent you. They might resent you, right? They might think, oh, this guy is like, thinks he's better than us or something. And which is good because basically it'll push them away from you. Because what you want to do is you want to attract only successful people. Again, if you want to be successful, you need to be around successful people. Okay? Now, here's the thing. If you buy a, a, that $3,000 Rolex, two things are going to happen. <clears throat> Let me tell you what's a smart investment. Now, Dave Ramsey, that, that, that scammer, that grifter, uh, he's not going to tell you this. Here's the, here's the thing. The, the, the rich get rich by owning assets. Assets appreciate, especially with inflation. That Rolex you buy is going to put you on the ladder, okay? It's going to put you on the Rolex ladder. What does that mean? Well, that watch, generally speaking, is going to appreciate, I think in this environment, let's call it 5% a year. And I know it's not a lot. You're not going to, you know, it's... It's not, you're not going to become a billionaire by buying a $2,000 Rolex. Well, actually, maybe you can. Maybe you can. Um, but, uh, by the way, this is, this is the marina world. The brokesters keep their boats. Yeah, some of these guys actually live on their boats. I'm surprised. Actually, I'm surprised that Anthony, the timepiece gentleman, wasn't living on one of these boats. Um, technically, you're not supposed to live here on the boat, but uh, what are they called? They're called the... Uh, they call it the this, this sneaker board, the sneaker boards. <laughs> and look, they, you know, they pay 500 bucks for a slip or 600 bucks, and you know, you can live on it. Actually, I lived in a boat for about six months full time. It was great. A little, a little chilly at night sometimes in the winter, but very nice. Listen, just like Anthony was you know, living on the beach, uh, same thing, right? It's actually very nice. Um, now, here's the thing again, the, the buying that $3,000 Rolex. It's going to put you on the ladder because the watch is going to appreciate. Now, you need, you know, if you're broke, you need to own assets, right? Most poor people, they don't own assets. They don't own things that appreciate with inflation, right? They don't, they don't, they don't have any of that. Now, here's, 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 the, here's the thing, right? With this, with this, um, with this Rolex, let's say you buy, buy for three grand. Let's look at the downside. If you buy it right, okay, I'm talking about if you're smart, you buy it right, you really can't lose. Okay, by the way, I'm not giving you investment advice. This is not, this is not anything that I'm, I'm just telling you. From my experience, basically you can't lose because if you buy it right, you can always resell it. You can, you might be able to sell it at profit to, to you know, private party. Uh, now, if you get into trouble, maybe you can pawn it, right? You might get, 
you know, you might get the fifteen hundred dollars from a pawn shop, you know, as a loan. You know, get it back when you repay. Uh, I don't know. Let's say you're stuck in a third world country. You know, you can always that watch you can sell anywhere. It's an international currency, right? It's an international asset. Do you understand the power of that? Right now, you don't have that, right? But uh, that watch, that watch is going to put you on the path towards towards success. Now, here's the other thing, right? When you're wearing a three thousand dollar watch, the beautiful thing about it is, if you're now if you're around broke people, you know, brokesters, they're going to say, "Oh, why are you wearing an old watch? Uh, why you, this looks like a, a cheap watch or something?" Because you know they don't know anything. But if you're around successful people, if you're around wealthy people, especially, you know really wealthy people. I'm not talking about nouveau riche. I'm talking about, you know, people who've, you know, multi-generational wealth, old money, right? If you were in a $3,000 Rolex, you know what's going to happen? They're going to think you're one of them. Why? Because, you know, it looks like a type of watch you may have inherited from somebody. And by the way, if you're inheriting a Rolex, you know, a $3,000 Rolex, it's probably a 40, it's probably something from the 70s or the 80s, maybe even the late 60s. And generally, the only people who were buying those watches in the 60s, 70s, and 80s were people who were, you know, uh, you know, affluent, okay? At least affluent. Look okay, at this beautiful bird. I love these birds. Not a crane. What do I forget what it's called? Anyhow, so um, you, you wear that watch, especially if you wear it on a strap or even if you wear it on a, on a stretched out bracelet, it looks like, you know, an old. it's an old money look. It's an old money look. By the way... <laughs> Yeah, I know that all of a sudden that's that's popular now. This whole thing with old money, you know, this is this is this is the, this is the, this is the key, right? You want something that you know it looks like, you know, you're you're successful. Maybe it's been in your family, whatever. Let's say you're a busboy, you're a waiter, okay? If you're a waiter, you're a mechanic, and you're wearing that stretched out day just, you know, that two tone day just with a champagne dial from you know 1984 or something, 1980, 1978. Um, I guarantee you, people are going to pay you more. You're going to get better tips. People are going to take you more seriously because they see that watch and they say, shit, this guy's uh, serious. Especially, again, I'm talking about if you're around people who are, you know, successful, people who are sophisticated, uh, people who are, um, you know, um, you know, the type of people you want to be around, right? Those are the people that you aspire to be, right? So they're going to they're gonna be impressed. They're going to say, wow, this guy has taste. This guy has class. Uh, and that is going to open you to opportunities as well, right? I don't know, what, whatever those opportunities are. So again, you're making a $3,000 investment in your future. That's right. It's a $3,000. It's not a, you're not spending it. You're, you're not, you're making an investment. Okay. When you buy that, that Rolex, it's going to be an investment. And look, every time you look at it, you look at that beautiful crown, the Rolex. You know, they were very smart when they used that logo, the crown. Like you're the king, right? That's the whole idea. You know, it's a very. It's like I don't even know how to explain. It. It's a magical brand. It really, they're very smart people. Very smart people behind the brand. Uh, and um, again, when you look, every time you look at that watch, you're gonna feel successful. Now. What about, what about, if you don't have $3,000, what if you're flat broke? Well, now that you're watching this video, at least, it's going to, it's going to motivate you. It's going to give you something to work hard towards. Now, the beautiful thing about, you know, material things, whether you're talking about cars, watches, whatever it is, right? These uh, aspirational, aspirational things... Uh, again, what what they do is they make you uh, aspire. They make you stretch. Okay, it makes you, you know, work harder. Again, it makes you stretch. Right? Look, you know, the first watch you buy, you know, as uh, as I think it was as Archie Luggage used to say, you know, it's gotta hurt. It's gotta hurt. Right? Now, why why is it that, you know, in the, in the uh, uh, what is it the, in the uh, you know, when you buy an engagement ring, right? Everybody's been brainwashed that oh, it's got to be like three month salary or two month salary, what two month salary, whatever it is, right? You know, that, that, you know, that, that's a lot of money, right? Let's say you're only making five grand a month. That's ten grand. Ten grand is a lot of money, right? For for a ring. Um, why is it? Because you know, when you make that type of investment, it really it's a real commitment. It really, you're it hurts to to spend that money. So when you give it to uh, you know. Uh, some broad, she's gonna say, "Wow, this guy really, 
this guy really must uh, care about me. He really will be committed. You know, whatever, whatever the whole the whole story is, whatever the, the whole psychology behind it. Uh, but yes, look, uh, what is it? I think uh, uh, your energy go. You know, ener- what is it? Money flows where your attention goes, or energy goes where your attention. Bottom line is, look, when you make a commitment, when you spend, when you make the investment, not spend, when you make that investment. It's going to, you know, it's going to, um, it's going to make you work harder, right? It's going to make you stretch. And that is, again, that's going to, you know, do great things for you. Because, uh, look, the, the harder you work, the more creative you become, uh, the, the better it is for everybody, right? Like, I, I want you to become successful, right? Why? Look, I, I really don't give a shit about you. But, <laughs> look, if you, become, if you become rich, you become successful, it's better for everybody. For me, especially. Because that means I don't have to... You know, pay higher taxes to support you know mooj bums, uh, and uh, you know you're maybe you're going to provide valuable services. I don't know. Maybe you're like uh, uh, a plumber. I don't know, uh, a shoe repair guy. Uh, you know, a dentist. I have no idea. Whatever. Listen, the whole planet, the whole human race. It's all about everything. All revolves around service, right? We're all serving each other. I'm serving you. That's right. I'm serving mooj bums like you by making this video. I'm giving you a valuable entertainment service high production value by the way this is high production value this is like uh, a, a, a steven spielberg martin scorsese quality type of production we're not this is not amateur hour okay when you subscribe to this channel you're getting uh the finest um uh, that's where i used to live right uh, those three story three story okay, that whole part you know what's interesting about marina del rey back in the day this was a place where all the uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming guys were here, like uh, Tony Robbins, uh, Richard, I think it was Richard Bandler. Uh, it is a very positive place. And interesting, you know what I ran into here was, um, who was the guy, the famous NLP guy who actually was big in the pickup, pickup world, Ross Jeffries. That's right, I ran into Ross Jeffries <laughs> at a supermarket and... Uh, you know, I, I actually invited him back to my boat. Uh, came back, yeah, nice guy, interesting guy. Um, and I bet Ross Jeffrey. And now Ross was not wearing a Rolex. It's interesting. Uh, if he did, if he was wearing a Rolex, I bet he'd be more successful in life. I think he had some sort of uh, comic book ring. I know he's got some ring he w- would wear. Uh, some sort of Shazam, I don't know, whatever the, whatever the these people do. Anyway, bottom line is, guys, you cannot afford not to own a Rolex, okay? I give you valuable secrets here. And you know what? I hope that uh, you, you, when, you, when you become successful, when you buy that Rolex, um, you become a trillionaire, you're going to, you know, remember this video and you're going to, you know, get in touch and, you know, send me a nice token of appreciation, maybe like, I don't know, five percent of your net worth or something just as a token of thanks for putting you on the right track right i mean think about it if it wasn't for me you'd be you'd be sitting at home sitting in in your in your parents basement right and now now you can become a uh an aristocrat okay it's it's getting dark and uh here we go see look we get the loom that's right you know look when you get when you get one of these um you get a, a watch that works 24-7. Now, look, realistically, those uh, 70s watches, $3,000 watch, it's not going to have any loom. It's, <laughs> the loom is going to be, it's not going to have any loom. It's going to be uh, basically, uh, you have to use a flashlight <laughs> to, see the, to see the watch. But it's a good start. So, again, don't be, don't be a window licker, okay? If, if you, do not buy a new Rolex because that's, that's a stupid move. You buy a new Rolex when you've got like I don't know uh, a couple hundred grand in the bank, uh, you know at least a hundred grand in the bank. Actually, no, I, I would say a couple hundred because there really is no reason to buy a new a new Rolex unless yeah you got you need a couple hundred grand because because there's just so many other better better options with used watches and. Yeah, you, you don't want to you don't want to buy a new Rolex until you're really like you know you've really you know made it. You're you're at least somewhat financially independent. It's just the used market is better now. What kind of watch should you buy again? I'm partial to again if you're on a budget, I would say the the, the Datejust, um, you know, Turnograph, uh, maybe um, oof, you might be able to get a president a day date for. Eight grand if you can stretch on a strap, 
not the, which is by the way is a great look. Uh, this there's there's some options. There's some options. Uh, maybe uh, a Submariner. There's some Submariner. The one watch I would avoid is the um, Explorer Two. The Explorer Two. That watch is like a brokester's watch. It's not a it's not a watch that that, that gives success vibes. I would not buy an Air King. Okay, I would not buy an Air King. I would not buy one of these basic, basic bitch Rolexes. You need the right one. It's got to be a day just. You want the fluted bezel, okay? And, uh, yeah, so you got to only really, for that low, low, under five grand, we're talking really, you know, day just, older turnograph, um maybe some sort of mm, I don't think you can get a Submariner but it doesn't matter you don't want the Submariner it's not a Submariner is not a success watch it's not a success watch the Submariner is for the guy who cleans the boat the you know this is for the guy who owns the boat right uh, the day just is you know that's uh, that's the guy who could be on the boat who knows there's a lot of you know very very wealthy people who have uh, the uh, the day just it's probably the first watch I could be a billionaire. He's probably still wearing the same watch. You know, it's like maybe he's like a Texas oil man, and he's wearing uh, you know the watch he bought when his first well came in. Right? That's uh, that's how it works. And maybe it has sentimental value. So again, you know, that's that's the great thing when you wear one of these you know fifty year old watches. You buy a fifty year old Rolex for you know thirty four grand, two three grand even. Uh, you know, it gives that uh, that vibe, that you know, that old money success vibe. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Leave your vicious and nasty comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.